what I want to do in this video is to just go through a sort of image rescue uh, workflow here in Lightroom, the latest version of Lightroom. And uh, yeah, this isn't one of my pictures. This is a picture from Paul Smith, one of my clients, who uh, actually took this on a quick whirlwind workshop tour over to the Maasai Mara that he took back in October. And uh, yeah, it's, um, hmm, doesn't look brilliant, does it? Yeah, and this is what Lightroom does to your images. So just to make sure we're on a import view, we'll just go and click the reset button. As you can see, it makes absolutely no difference at all. And you're going to look at this image and you're going to think it's massively overexposed. Well, it isn't. It's actually exposed to the right, basically, as far as Paul could take it. Um, basically, to try and help capture the details in the shadows, because this is very strong overhead light. And uh, if he'd just recorded this at a flat metering, then the shadows would have been blocked. If we come over to the uh, library module, we can see that he's actually used one and two thirds EV compensation on his Canon 1DX Mark II and his 200-400 millimeter lens. So Paul knows what he's doing, but when you look at this image inside a Lightroom, you think, oh God, that looks terrible. Now, the crackpot thing is, if I look at this RAW file, instead of inside Lightroom, if I look at it in RAW therapy, oh dear. Yeah, now that is one and two thirds EV compensation on the raw file but with a totally neutral raw handler process in other words this is the raw file imported and demosaic viral therapy with no background adjustments on it whatsoever and as you can see it's it's still slightly on the dark side if we look over in the histogram the main peak is about half a stop below the sort of halfway or 50 percent line of the histogram center line of the histogram so it is still slightly underexposed so it gives you a good idea of the harshness of the light that paul was actually shooting under totally hideous lighting conditions but you know i suppose when you're in the maasai mara you've got to do what you need to do when you got to do it you know and uh, the lights either good bad or indifferent but if we go back to Lightroom and you can see when you do any sort of exposure compensation especially positive exposure compensation in other words employing the good old ETTR technique Lightroom's demosaicing um, can't quite get a handle on what it is you're trying to do so it gives you a massively overexposed preview of the image. And as you can see, you look at the histogram here, in comparison to the histogram in raw therapy up here, and there is just no comparison between the two. And I've done videos and blog posts on this before, and uh, we'll just go through it all over again just to show you exactly what Lightroom is doing to the RAW file that we don't really want it to do because let's face it the majority of photographers if they've got a shot like this or a shot that looks like this inside a Lightroom they think they've overexposed they think the shot's ruined and they'll probably bin it and in reality that, that would just be completely the wrong approach because the raw file as you've already seen in raw therapy looks nothing like this and so what we're going to do is make it look more realistic inside of Lightroom and so we'll simply come over to the basics panel I'll remove this crazy Adobe color by switching out to camera neutral and straight away you can see things are still looking massively overexposed but not by quite as much we'll click the close button we'll come down to calibration and we'll temporarily switch out to pv 2010 
and the reason I've done that is because it actually shows you the real tone curve that Lightroom is applying in the background. You see, if I switch back to process version 4 and then open the tone curve, it gives you the impression it's applying a linear tone curve to the image and really and truly it isn't. So we'll switch that back out to process version 2. Now you can see the actual hidden tone curve. We'll come back over to our presets and we'll come and select zeroed and straight away you can now see that it has actually straightened out that tone curve. Yes, the image looks absolutely atrocious at the moment, but as soon as we come back to calibration and switch back to process version 4, now then, you can see we've got an image that looks still a little bit on the bright side, but look at the histogram now in comparison to where it was before. The histogram is actually bulked up in the middle of the histogram horizontal axis. Okay, so we'll come back into Lens Corrections and we'll remove Chromatic Aberration. We'll go back to Detail. We'll pile all the default sharpening back on that Lightroom wants to put on it. And we'll put the default amount of colour noise back on. Let's come into the image at 100% view. And let's now just go and have a look what's happened. We've taken 33 contrasts out. We've taken, we've actually boosted the blacks by plus 25. Let's bring that back to default zero. And now we've just got a little bit more contrast in this. Uh, oh, what a mush, eh? <laughs> big girl, big lioness here. Wouldn't like to get my head stuck between those teeth. But uh, yeah, so now we've actually taken, indirectly taken, a stop of exposure out now remember if we go back to the library module Paul actually added an exposure bias of one and a half to one and two thirds EV so if we come back to the develop module and if we sort of add one and a half or one and two thirds EV in a negative direction we can sort of see that if we trundle that down to about 1.95 we've now got a good starting point to take this image maybe over into Photoshop and do some localized contrast adjustments to it and maybe a little bit of saturation or we could actually just try and do something rather quickly in Lightroom let's just apply a bit of a crop to it because it has got a bit of a centralized composition uh, we don't want to crop through the bottom of this rock with the bottom of the frame. So we'll just lift it up a little bit like that. So we're making quite a nice composition based around this suggested rule of thirds. And then, typical of me, I might just want to go and put a little bit of post-crop vignetting on it. I might then want to go and get a graduated filter. Bring this up from the bottom to maybe just underneath the chin and instead of doing a negative exposure we might just want to brighten that foreground up just a little bit and maybe go and add a bit of saturation to that foreground and now what we've done is we've at least got some assemblage if you like or some representation of depth in the image so there you go i mean if you want to look at it in comparison to how it was when we started there we go um we've got a overexposed lioness and um, that's not really overexposed because the original look of the image when it was brought into lightroom made it look as if all this upper mid-tone detail was actually mushed away in highlights and blown highlights and blown detail and lost detail when just with a little bit of careful processing and a little bit of forethought we can bring all of that detail back out and notice we haven't used any highlight or shadow adjustment or recovery so there you go i hope you enjoyed this quick video i hope you found it useful if you have found it useful 
I want to make more of these videos freely available on my YouTube channel and it would just help if you could possibly entertain the fact of going and giving me a little bit of support over on my Patreon channel. There'll be a link above and a link below at the end of this video. Just seriously guys, a dollar a month, a dollar a month would be brilliant and it would help me get to where I want to be which is actually put two or three of these videos out every week just to give you a helping hand so there you go bear in mind i'm not slagging lightroom off i know a lot of people seem to think i do slag lightroom off i don't because i use it all the time but the only thing is i like to get lightroom under control and all i want to do is help you guys do the same so until the next time guys thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you very soon Toot.